This is very interesting. I really like this move. And I've talked about this before. When an owner gets older, they want to win. And they may change their worldview on football. Jerry Jones has always been very emotional. He loves his players. One of my complaints has been for two years, they overpay. They pay good players great money. So yesterday, they released Jalen Smith. Now, they're on the hook for his contract this year, but not on the hook for his contract $9 million next year. This is very important. First of all, this is why the NFL is great. You don't get trapped with players. They draft Micah Parsons. He's a sensational talent. You have Van Der Esch, Neil from Atlanta. You don't need Jalen Smith. Jalen gets paid. Don't you know? No sympathy there. He gets paid. Good guy. Great story. The Cowboys are now out of the contract as of next year. In baseball, the Brooklyn Nets, uh, the Angels with Albert Pujols, uh, the, the Brooklyn Nets with Kyrie. One of the things I always feel bad for fans is when you get trapped into these bad contracts, especially in basketball, you know, it, it's a salary cap league and you're just trapped. Right now, you start looking at certain baseball teams and you're like, man, you got nine years to pay a guy and he's already hit his peak. In football, this is why you can name the really, really bad contracts in the NFL on one hand. There's almost none of them. You can get rid, you get rid of Brady today, be no cap hit, seriously, in a year. And that's the first part of it. This is good for the league. And Jalen Smith, good kid, great story. Jerry fell in love with him, 30-minute press conference. But he was no longer needed. They had a log jam at corner or at linebacker. But this is another reason I like this. Because I have been complaining about the Cowboys for several years. The one thing that guarantees you will not win a Super Bowl in any salary cap league is paying great money to good players of their linebackers. In fact, their linebacker unit this morning is almost a bargain. Their secondary, Byron Jones, gone a couple of years. <laughs> They've got a star. It's almost a bargain. Not paying any of their safeties. Dallas this morning is overpaying a running back. But if you look in the NFL at the positions you should pay, quarterback, O-line, star receiver, pass rusher. So the combination of moving off Jalen Smith, he gets paid. No pity party, great kid, he gets paid. The Cowboys get rid of a bad contract, and now because they've hit two home runs in the draft, both their secondary and linebacker units, oh my, it's almost like they're getting a deal. That's incredibly important to win Super Bowls, that you draft them a Mahomes. And you, for three years, don't pay him anything. You draft a Josh Allen and get a break for three years. That's how Goff gets to a Super Bowl. That's how the Cleveland Browns, because they haven't paid Baker yet, have this incredible O-line and receiving core and Miles Garrett, and they paid for a secondary. So this is a really big day for the Cowboys. They hit on two draft picks. They move off Jalen Smith. Now their books look like championship books. Okay, they're overpaying for a running back. You have a right to overpay for somebody. I mean, Sammy Watkins, good receiver. I swear to God, every team he's been on, he's been overpaid. He's been overpaid by four teams. But he's fast. He's good in the playoffs. You have a right to overpay for somebody. But it all of a sudden this morning, I look at the Cowboys and their structure, and I'm like, all right, that's the way to do it. You're getting a two or three of your stars you're not paying anything to. You're paying all the right positions and units. By the way, they also hit a home run with C.D. Lamb. So now you got C.D. Lamb, Trayvon Diggs, Micah Parsons, way outperforming their contracts. That's how you win Super Bowls. You can't pay great money to good players and have no value. You've got to find some labor on the market that you're winning in the salary cap sport. Now they're winning with three different players, and they moved a bad contract. I think it's a very good day for the Cowboys. The books are much cleaner today. They look like a championship accounting set. That, that's the way the great ones do it. They're getting value on a lot of people so they can overpay for their quarterback or their left tackle. That's very exciting for them. Uh, the Herd, by the way, brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. So this next story is, um, you know, I always had this theory. Smart people don't have a right to get conveniently dumb, right? Remember the deflate gate? I was always very suspicious of that. Bill Belichick has his fingers on the pulse of the whole franchise. Suddenly when it came to footballs, ah! What's going on here? I, 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 I don't even check the footballs. I was like, yeah. 
Suddenly he was conveniently absent-minded. I was always a little, I don't know what happened with the flight gate. I mean, it's not a Brady thing, really. He's still great. But Aaron Rodgers is really smart. Really smart. He's one of those guys that, you know, he, he's manipulative and he can see around corners. He's a very smart guy. So in the last couple of weeks, he's made comments. They played the Steelers before they played the Steelers. After they played the Steelers, he talked about Mike Tomlin. And let's not go crazy here. But Aaron is too smart to conveniently suddenly become very casual with his love fest with Pittsburgh. Um, so here's my point. Aaron knows what he's doing. So the Pittsburgh Steelers currently have three losses. Look at their schedule. I count at least nine more losses. This is going to be a bad team. Yeah, I'm sorry, but they're not going to beat Seattle. They're not going to beat Cleveland, at Cleveland, at the Chargers, Baltimore, at Kansas City. They're not beating Cleveland this year. They're not beating Cleveland. Get over it. They're not beating Baltimore. Not happening. I'm not sure they're beating Cincinnati. I may give you that one. But this is very interesting. So combine that with the fact that, oh, Baltimore appears to have a star quarterback who can throw. Oh, Joe Burrow's really good and has star receivers and only getting better. Oh, Cleveland's got a really good head coach and a great O-line and a really sharp GM and a franchise quarterback they mostly love. Pittsburgh is staring at a hole for years. Don't forget, the Packers disappeared for a decade in the 80s before Favre. They disappeared. Disappeared. New England disappeared for years pre-Brady. The Giants have been doing a pretty good job the last six years of disappearing. This is not college football. You fire the coach. You get a new guy in. You got a big brand. You recruit a bunch of players. You don't get the quarterback right. You can disappear. So the division, the quarterbacks, you have at least two stars, and Baker probably remains in Cleveland. So you're going to, if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, with that defense and Mike Tomlin, you're going to just roll the dice on a 50% hit rate First-round college quarterback. Really? You do remember how many quarterbacks you moved through between Bradshaw and Big Ben. About 12. This franchise has a history. They had Bradshaw. They had a bunch of guys. And then they hit Big Ben. And that's the only time they won Super Bowls. The Rooney family remembers very well that big gap between Bradshaw and Big Ben. How do you solve it? You don't go college. You go get Aaron Rodgers, who, unlike a college quarterback, doesn't have a 50% hit rate. He's got a 100% hit rate. What wins in sports in 2021? Aggressive. We've seen it with the Dodgers. We've seen it with the Lakers. We see it with everybody. Is Aaron's going to casually just throw it out there? Aaron Rodgers is way too smart to just throw it out there. He wants... People to know, I like Tomlin. And by the way, players do. Mike's great. But if you think he's just throwing it out there, he's not throwing it out there with a lot of other coaches. He's not throwing it out there with, you know, Pete Carroll. They got a quarterback. They're not throwing it out there with uh, uh, Kansas City. I love Andy Reid. Well, they got a quarterback. He's throwing it out there with the one franchise with a great defense, great wide receiver talent, great ownership group, great GM, great scouting, who just happened to have a quarterback who should be in a rocking chair. Aaron Smart. You don't get to be conveniently silly and glib when you're as smart as Aaron Rodgers. And by the way, you know, and I know, Green Bay wants to get Aaron into the AFC. I don't want to, tra- I want to have to face Aaron Rodgers again. They want him in the other place. So if they, that's why even, even Belichick traded Garoppolo to the NFC. And that's just Garoppolo. He didn't want a chance of Garoppolo to come back and beat him. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it, it, it's, it's, Aaron's too smart. I, I never give smart guy, oh, just deflate gate, balls. Uh, what, I, who knows what happened? Be a break. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.